Complications of Taylor Neck Fractures There are multiple complications for Taylor Neck Fractures. Arthritis, a vascular necrosis, which is best diagnosed with x-rays, male union, and non-union. Non-union of the talus occurs in about 5%. Arthritis. Subtalar arthritis is the most common complication of talar neck fractures. It occurs in about 50 to 100% of cases. It actually occurs more than a vascular necrosis. Ankle arthritis, which is tibiotalar arthritis, occurs in about one-third of patients, 33%. A vascular necrosis of the talus. A vascular necrosis means death of a segment of a bone due to interruption of the blood supply. In case of Taylor neck fractures, there will be death of the body of the talus. Osteonecrosis does not usually involve the entire Taylor body. This is the blood supply of the talus. The artery of the tarsal canal is the dominant blood supply. The deltoid branch of the posterior tibial artery is the only remaining blood supply with displaced Taylor neck fractures. Just remember, the deltoid branch of the tarsal canal must be preserved during surgery. It supplies half of the medial Taylor body. The blood supply of the Taylor neck is very tenuous, and when the talus fractures, this blood supply is susceptible to injury and disruption. The incidence of AVN correlates with the degree of displacement and the severity of the fracture. The extent of the initial fracture displacement is very important. The risk of AVN increases with increased fracture displacement. If the blood supply is seriously affected, then that will increase the incidence of AVN. There are four types of Taylor neck fractures, and the incidence of AVN varies in each type. The incidence of a vascular necrosis is about 30% for all types. AVN occurs more with open fractures. Type 1 is a non-displaced fracture of the Taylor neck, and the incidence of AVN is 10%. Type 2 fracture is displaced with subtalar dislocation or subluxation, and the AVN is about 50%. Type 3 is a displaced fracture, and the Taylor body is subluxed or dislocated from the subtalar joint and also from the ankle joint. The AVN incidence is about 90%. Type 4 fracture is a displaced fracture with a Taylor head subluxation from the talonavicular joint and the body is extruded. The AVN is about 100%. When AVN occurs, the condition becomes complicated and salvage procedure can be helpful. The status of the Taylor vascularity can be checked by the Hawkins sign. AVN is diagnosed on plain x-rays and by the absence of the Hawkins sign. What is the Hawkins sign? The Hawkins sign is a subcondylar osteopenia lucency seen at 6 to 8 weeks on the mortis view x-ray of the ankle of the dome of the talus. Look for this radiolucent line below the subcondylar bone, which is more commonly seen on the medial side of the mortis view. 
How can sign is a good indication of intact vascularity with resorption of the subcondylar bone following fractures of the tailor neck? Its presence indicates the talus is alive, that the prognosis is good. Its absence does not rule out an intact vascularity. In all patients that had the Hawkins sign, none of them developed a vascular necrosis, so the sensitivity is 100%, but the specificity is about 57%. No association has been shown between the timing of the fixation and the development of osteonecrosis. The fracture is usually reduced and fixed, and the patient is followed up clinically and by x-rays. For healing of the fracture and for the development of vascular necrosis. Once the fracture heals, Begin weight-bearing. Restricting weight-bearing beyond that, which is needed for healing of the fracture, does not decrease the incidence of vascular necrosis. At three to six months postoperatively, AVM can be seen on the plain X-ray as sclerosis. The MRI is sensitive for detecting AVN as it shows decreased signal on T1, but it does not guide the treatment. In MRI studies, titanium implants have better visualization than stainless steel implants. Another complication is varus malunion, which occurs in about 25 to 30 percent of cases. The patient will have varus and decreased subtalar motion, especially eversion. You find the patient ambulate on the lateral aspect of the foot. The varus malunion occurs due to medial comminution of the talus, and it is a preventable complication. In talus fracture, it is important to restore the articular cartilage reduction, shape, and the axial alignment of the talus. Caution is suggested when compression fixation is used in the medial side of the talus, especially when there is a medial comminution, because this will lead to a varus deformity. The use of medial and lateral approaches will help to avoid this complication. The treatment of varus malunion is medial opening wedge osteotomy of the tailor neck. Dorsal malunion, impingement of the dorsal surface of the talus on the distal tibia and decreased ankle dorsiflexion. This deformity can occur due to an isolated dorsal malunion. So dorsal malunion occurs when the head fragment remains dorsal to the body, causing impingement of the talus on the distal tibia. The dorsal beak resection of the tailor neck will help to improve the condition. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.